Sherry Honkala. We can all help elect Sherry Honkala, but right now we can welcome her to the Democracy Convention. Right. Sherry Honkala!
some of this, but I am a product of my environment and my history. As a formerly homeless mother, I learned some important lessons coming from the Midwest. Living as a homeless mother in Minnesota, I knew what it was like on that cold winter night when I decided to do something like break the law and to survive. Because I had learned about this concept that through the Midwest, they keep these homes on, they keep the heat on in the winter time so that the pipes don't freeze. And I decided that as a poor mother, a homeless mother who couldn't get into shelter in the Twin Cities, that damn it, I was just as important as those pipes and so was my son. And I began the process of taking over abandoned government owned empty homes. And I began the process of getting arrested somewhere up to two, three times on a daily basis. And this was before the time when they had cell phones. So my older son, Mark, he would go down to the corner with quarters in his pocket, put them in the telephone, and call my friends. You see, at the time, I didn't realize that was organization. <laughs> <laughs> and then I soon learned that I went from actually being like the homeless mother fighting back, who was courageous, to now a professional organizer. <laughs> And so the papers, you know, they, I, it was fun to watch that shift in the papers as well, right? I went from, you know, the poor homeless mother being denied shelter to horrible radical agitator. <laughs> and I would learn so, several of those lessons throughout my life. For over the last 25 years, I've fought hard. I've done things that I've never wanted to do before teach people how to build homeless encampments in urban areas, which then began to be known as tent cities, stealing ideas from the Great Depression, creating not these wonderful books here, maybe someday they will be like that, but pamphlets and distributing them throughout the country on how to take over abandoned houses and how to fight foreclosure. and chairs and lamps and 
there, you know, we had one of the guys in all of his colonial garb and, uh, you know, his wig on and everything. And he was talking to the children, the homeless children, about how all the fights had taken place to, you know, fight our forefathers have fought for this country and everything. And then um, while he was talking, um, the park police on mounted horses started coming our way. And uh, he realized that the children were no longer listening to what he was saying. So he turned around and then uh, he saw the mounted horses coming our way. So he hightailed it across Independence Hall. Uh, after talking to the children about how our fathers. <laughs> so anyway, um, but the Constitution Center, we, you know, we were all so lucky because you know they built the Constitution Center, and uh, they invited all the past living presidents, and so I knew that it was an important day for me. <laughs>
this press coming and that kind of stuff. The next thing I know, something's happening in the mayor's office and all of our press leave. Oh, no. <laughs> all of our press leave. So anyway, so the moral of the story is, is uh, I have to tell you these stories because uh, yeah. separate of independent media, the people that participated in them, you would never know about them. And these are important stories to tell. Because now we're living in a time where we're dealing with billions of dollars that are being used to preempt our civil liberties and to teach us that somehow there's terrorism, terrorists out there when we're really dealing with the terrorists here at home. Because they're 
they're more ashamed of that, even though down the block their neighbor is in foreclosure, and then the one on the next block's in foreclosure, and then their other friend is in foreclosure. There's 14 million unemployed, 43 million below poverty, 50 million uninsured, and 3.5 million homeless. This last year, my sister lost her home after 20 years. My friend, dying of AIDS, I told and pleaded with Judge Fox not to go forward with his injectment because to throw him out of his home right now would potentially kill him. The judge and the bank went forward. My campaign office right now in Philadelphia is located next to the largest disability organization in the country. They just laid off 180 disabled workers who will probably never work again in their life. We have the second highest hunger rate in America now in Philadelphia. And people are groveling to, to, to figure out how to feed people. In Philadelphia, we spent more money on prisons than education. And across this country, we continue to spend more money on war. So this year, I had to make that decision. I had to have my own earth shift by deciding to run for Philly, in Philly as the people's sheriff. Somebody that will protect the people, not the banks, the developers, the speculators. The and that 
to create living wage jobs. But for God's sake, there's plenty of jobs to go around. Really? It's 2011. It's time to stop all the barbaric behavior. You guys have demonstrated that here in Wisconsin when you stood up. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming here. 